approach the speed of sound look different from low-speed aircraft. To find out why, let's first consider how sound itself travels through the air. Slowing down the picture shows how the sound is produced. The vibrating prongs give the air a succession of pushes. And like pressure waves along a spring, these sound waves travel on through the air. The air is alternately compressed and rarefied. And as each wave passes, there is a brief disturbance. Sound waves are pressure waves. Like ripples on a pond, they spread out from their small directions at the same speed. All small disturbances in the air, whether audible or not, travel outwards at this same speed, the speed of sound. What is this speed? Well, here is a convenient source of sound at sea level. Let's measure the takes for the sound of the explosion to travel one mile, the distance between these two forts. The flash is coming now. One, two, three, four. The sound took just under five seconds to travel the mile. That is, at sea level, the speed of sound is about 760 miles per hour. The exact speed depends effectively on only one factor, the temperature of the air. The higher the temperature, the faster the sound travels. On a really hot day, it may reach over 800 miles per hour at sea level. But temperature falls with altitude until the stratosphere is reached at about 36,000 feet. Above this height, the temperature remains constant at approximately 60 degrees centigrade below zero. So the speed of sound is lower, only 660 miles per hour. What has the speed of sound to do with high-speed flying? To find out, let's consider first a single point sending out small pressure waves continuously. Each wave travels outwards at the speed of sound. Now suppose the point itself is moving. If its speed is less than the speed of sound, the pressure waves still travel out ahead. But if the point is traveling at the speed of sound, the pressure waves cannot travel out ahead of it, for the point is traveling as fast as they are. If the point travels faster than sound, that is, at supersonic speed, this happens. But we're not going to deal with this case here. This is the kind of way in which the speed of sound affects high-speed aircraft. And therefore, at high speeds, the exact relation between the speed of an aircraft and the speed of sound is important. But remember, the speed of sound varies with temperature, and therefore with altitude. It's considerably lower in the stratosphere than at sea level. The ratio of an aircraft's true airspeed to the speed of sound, where it is flying, is called the aircraft's Mach number after the 19th century Austrian physicist Ernst Mach. It is usually shortened to M. At high speeds, it is essential for the pilot to know the Mach number, and Mach meters are fitted to all high-speed aircraft. This is how an aircraft's Mach number is calculated. The aircraft has flown six-tenths of a mile in the time that the sound wave has traveled ten-tenths of a mile. It has flown at six-tenths of the speed of sound in the same atmospheric condition. So its Mach number is 0.6. This aircraft is flying at Mach 0.9.
Aircraft flying at the same true airspeed, but at different heights, will have different Mach numbers, for the speed of sound is different in two cases. The Mach numbers at which an aircraft is intended to operate have a great influence on its design. An aircraft is much more complicated than the point source of pressure waves we saw earlier. So the behavior of the air is more complicated too. To find out about it, let us consider the airflow around a wing. This wing section is symmetrical like most modern wings. It is in typical flying attitude. The air is slowed down at the nose to form what is called the stagnation region. It speeds up as it passes around the curvature of the wing. It slows down again towards the trailing edge. These changes of speed cause changes in the air pressure. The yellow regions show reduced and the green increased pressure. All these variations in pressure together produce lift and drag. Now each point on the wing acts like a point source. Here we're showing a few such points. Each sends out pressure waves which travel at the speed of sound and reach the air ahead of the wing. We can use smoke to show how the air flows. The influence of the pressure waves traveling ahead can be seen from the way the streamlines are deflected well ahead of the wing. Lowering a flap changes the entire flow pattern around the wing and affects the airflow ahead. We can see this better with a single streamline. Mark its position well ahead. Even at a distance, the streamline changes direction. The effect of the pressure waves on the air ahead is of great importance. It smooths the flow past an aircraft flying well below the speed of sound. But what happens when approaching the speed of sound? The airflow speeds up as it passes over the wing and reaches its maximum speed at a certain point. The Mach number here will always be greater than that of the aircraft as a whole, called the flight Mach number. As the flight Mach number increases, so does the local Mach number at the maximum speed up point. Eventually, though the aircraft as a whole is flying at less than the speed of sound, just at this point on the wing, the air is moving at the speed of sound. The flight Mach number, when this happens, is called the critical Mach number of the aircraft. Usually written M crit. M crit always be less than one. Aerodynamically, the critical Mach number is very important. For the aircraft has reached the speed at which it meets mixed airflow. Part subsonic, that is less than the speed of sound. Part supersonic greater than the speed of sound. It is the beginning of the transonic speed range. From the behavior of the aircraft, the pilot has no way of telling that he has reached the critical Mach number. But soon after it has been exceeded, things begin to happen. The Mach meter on the left has been altered since the actual critical Mach number of this type of aircraft has not yet been released. In this picture, it is 0.9. And soon after M crit is exceeded, the aircraft starts to buffet violently. Aircraft vary greatly in their behavior above the critical Mach number. Some show violent instability, while others, specially designed for transonic flight, may be little disturbed. To find out why problems arise above the critical Mach number, let's use a high-speed wind tunnel. 
This one's fitted with special optical equipment to show in colors regions where the density of the air is changing. These effects can be photographed. Their colors appear. We have chosen red to show regions where density is increasing and blue regions where it is decreasing. A symmetrical wing section designed for high speeds is put in the tunnel. At low speeds, the air behaves as if it were incompressible. Whatever pressure changes there are, are so slight as to cause no color change. But as speed increases, the air does begin to show signs of compressibility. show regions of increasing and decreasing density. The red area at the leading edge is the stagnation region where the air is being slowed down and becoming denser. Immediately behind are two blue areas where the rate of speeding up is greatest, causing a reduction in density. This diagram will remind us of what's happening. As the flight Mach number increases, the flow at the point of maximum speed up on the wing reaches Mach 1, the speed of sound. The wing has reached its critical Mach number. And when this is exceeded, a sudden sharp region of increasing density forms on the wing just behind the point of maximum speed up. This is a shock wave. It is a sudden jump in the pressure of the air. It grows and moves back as the Mach number increases. 